On a mysterious pinpoint in the Pacific Ocean called Easter Island, a gathering of stone giants guards the shore. No one knows who carved them, why they exist, or how the 50-ton monsters were put into place. Yet they're here, unexplainable gargantuan pieces in a baffling mystery. In the jungles of Central America, colossal stone heads were discovered 80 miles from where they were originally carved. Weighing 100 tons, there is no clue as to how they were transported through dense swamp. Nor do we know who moved them to this remote jungle. Long before the Egyptians built the pyramids, someone constructed a vast stone city atop a peak in the Andes. The ruins stand empty and silent. Each carving is a disconnected figure from the past, yet some common origin might join them together. The earth itself bears the portraits of still other giants scratched onto a plateau in California 10,000 years ago. Others were etched with precision into an English hillside long before the building of Stonehenge. The tools to carve and move the giants indicate an advanced technology. There is a place where the knowledge and skills to create the giants may be found, the kingdom of Atlantis. Never before have explorers been so close to finding Atlantis. Never have we possessed as many clues, nor have we been able to bring the detection equipment of modern science to the search until now. The broken column may be all that remains of an entire civilization blasted apart by an incredible explosion. Atlantis. violent earthquakes and floods, and in a single day and night of misfortune, the island of Atlantis disappeared in the depths of the sea. So wrote the Greek philosopher Plato in the year 421 BC. Since then, adventurers obsessed by the tale of Atlantis have searched for traces of the remains of the fabled kingdom. Atlantis was said to have been a great city-state ruled by a race of men supposedly descended from the gods. Was it a real city, a wondrous land, or a myth, a tale created by someone's wild imagination? If Atlantis existed, it would have been a place where technology was far more advanced than anywhere else on Earth. To discover such a city, we may use as clues descriptions that can be found in the writings of the great Greek philosopher, Plato. At first, a small Greek island in the Aegean seemed an unlikely place to start the search, for Plato had written of a great and wonderful empire. They had conquered almost all of Africa, he reported, and more than half of Europe. Such a kingdom hardly fits the image of a tiny island like Santorini. In 1966, however, the remains of an ancient building were dug from beneath 250 feet of ash and lava. Its broken walls signal the first discovery of a great city. Today, only small villages cling to the Santorini mountainsides. But the island was once a large, circular landmass. 3,500 years ago, it was shattered by an incredible volcanic explosion. All that remains is a thin crescent of mountain and a sullen, smoldering volcano that erupts at least twice a century. The volcano that destroyed the island Plato knew as Thera may also have hidden all evidence of Atlantis. In many ways, the ruins are like those found elsewhere in the Aegean, reminiscent of the Minoan civilization. Then, reading Plato and viewing the broken walls and shattered pots, a sudden chilling discovery is made. 
These ruins fit Plato's description of Atlantis with an uncanny accuracy. They constructed buildings about them and planted suitable trees, wrote Plato. Whatever fragrant things there now are in the earth or woods, or essences which distill from fruit and flower, grew and thrived in that land. They had such an amount of wealth as was never possessed by kings and potentates, and is not likely ever to be again. The entire area was densely crowded and kept up a multitudinous sound of human voices, of din and clatter of all sorts, night and day. There were the king's baths, and there were separate baths for women. And to each of them they gave as much adornment as possible. There were many temples built and dedicated to the gods. Also gardens and places of exercise. Plato tells us the citizens of Atlantis were skilled engineers, astronomers, and architects. He describes buildings and tools. And time after time, we see in the ruins of Santorini the almost eyewitness accuracy of his account. <laughs>